Hello everyone and welcome to DP's Creative Circus. Last week I had a very interesting conversation with a very talented musician and rapper that goes by the name of Deep Reasoning. Deep Reasoning is a Dublin-based MC who is currently working on his second album to date. The album will be coming out fairly shortly within the next year. The album is going to be entitled Battle of the Hemispheres. Um, the interview is a series of interviews where I'm going to be talking to creative professionals like yourself or creative individuals. And if you're interested in contributing to the show, I'd love to hear from you. And without further ado, here is last week's interview with Deep Reasoning. Enjoy. Trying to give ourselves a shake up from the coffee in your cup when you actually wake up to the sugar street day. Look at the make of the rush and the crash. All the time elapsed, mass cash to feed our habits. Same cycle and repeat because reality's too grim to read. Spin our atlas pursuit of the meat. The pure alert and the The first sort of recordings, you would have probably recorded a few mixtapes back in the day. Um, could you kind of talk through yeah. sort of your process for that? How. Um, you obviously had a great uh, interest in hip hop, and at that stage, you were already learning the kind of the structure of writing, and kind of you were finding your own style within the genre. Um, how did you go about to your first sort of recording process in terms of the equipment you used, or where you did it, how you did it, kind of thing? Um, yeah, I didn't really know how to go about it, to be honest. I think it was around seventeen when I started. Um, so yeah, it was just Phil's caps and just writing in them and just just lyrics really and just um probably playing other beats, beats by say Mob Deep or Nas or Dr. Dre or something like that. Um that would have been um what was used to and then I kind of recorded tapes, like actual cassette tapes. Um old school. Of, yeah, so I would just, that's all I kind of had really, just had a microphone and a t tape deck and just put it on a beat and I would just do a live run of it. And yeah, the the, the audio quality would have been uh, as rough as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. But at the time it was, it was a start, it was at least I could hear it back and go, oh, this is good or this is shit. And um, yeah, looking back, I mean, I still have them all in my bedroom somewhere. Um, must uh, have a listen back and uh, have a laugh at them. Um, that would be, that'd be uh, fascinating, actually, to see like your uh, progression over the years. Well, one of the big things with with music is like it's nearly like a diary. Not that I keep a diary, but it's like um, at any moment in time you can see what you're thinking. You know what I mean? Mm. Or what you, what what's happening in your life, mm. or um, if it's about someone else or whatever. Same thing. But um, yeah, so. It acts as a kind of snapshot of each, and I used to um, when I when I used to write on paper, I'd always date the rhymes. So it was cool to go right. This is what I thought in two thousand and seven, <laughs> two thousand and eight. So um, yeah. So moving on from that, really, my first like proper recording was with um, David Howard, a guy up in Kleine Hill, and um, he. Um, finished a course of Pulse and was getting into making beats so after uh, after meeting with him a few times we we put, we got together and we put together um, I, I suppose you call it a mixtape but we were using original beats so it was, it was kind of an album maybe like a demo album an EP we had 10 tracks and um, that was called the Quintessential LP so that was um, a lot of work went into that, despite it being about two months. Like um, when I first was recording, um, I didn't have enough strength in my voice. Um, when I talk, I usually talk quite even, so I, I wouldn't be one for speaking very loudly if in a day-to-day -day mm. sort of way. But uh, if I have a microphone, I now it's like 
uh, ingrained in me that I kind of deliver the the rhymes. Do you know what I mean? So um, I definitely learned that there, and just kind of another thing was learning to write about different things and what I wanted to. So I had all this stuff about what I wanted to write, and because I had their input, uh, Dave and uh, his friend um, Solomon they kind of were like, oh, write a song about this or that. And um, like we're all, I think the three of us were all around the age of 19 or 20 at the time. So wow. kind of mindset was a bit different as mm. well. So, uh, yeah, we kind of just made commercial sounding kind of tracks. Like some of them were about stuff, but others were kind of about going out drinking or going to a club or whatever. As you do when you're 18, 19 yeah. years old. So and, and I suppose you can be influenced by like the stuff like that, like 50 Cent and and whatever else was out at the time, like um, to a degree. I mean, weren't emulating them, but you kind of uh, be inspired by that or kind of influenced for a better word for that, by that. Very good. Um, so would this probably coincide into how you discovered your own style? Um, I mean, working with the likes of those lads at such a young age, and you were mentioned that you did a lot of kind of commercial stuff, uh, commercial yeah. sounding hip hop, that probably would have fed into how you kind of found the style that you wanted to rap about um, that identified you as a rapper. Yeah, and I don't really think, I, like my my style, if you like to call it, it's a, it's a bit cliche, but that is, I suppose, what it is. Everyone has their own style. And or sound is another one, but uh, I kind of always had this um, philosophical streak in what I wrote from the very start to the way it is now, and um, maybe too much of a philosophical streak in that end. Um, I was good to just take a step back and uh, not be as intense about everything and try and make a song about something else to give a bit of balance because it can be a bit much if you're uh, focusing on too much of one thing. But um, I don't know whether I've changed that much. Well, I, I suppose for sure, in terms of quality and professionalism, anyway. Mm. I suppose the difference of that is, I mean, you were saying it's talking about you know it being too philosophical. That's kind of what sets you apart from a lot of the other stuff that's out there as well. And maybe you might have been aware of that uh, at a young age, but um, it is kind of interesting when you have a mix of philosophical kind of seriousness in with you know what's you know the the local the kind of norm in hip hop which is just talking about the money and you know the cars and the women and all that kind of stuff and I'm, which everybody is kind of sick of anyway so it's, yeah, it's good to have that out. mix yeah yeah it's out. played out and that was another thing it's like you know are you going to rap about your flow are you going to rap about the women that you like or the places you go like it's it's very it's still done today but people like it. but i've noticed them um, those kind of songs if you really take a look at them closer there's usually a really good beat on them or there is a great flow to them so that's what makes them good and makes them tolerable to people even like myself who wouldn't mm. listen to that kind of stuff that much although i do listen to it like i would listen to artists like say and um, dave east or kendrick lamar kendrick lamar sometimes switches cool what he's doing mm -hmm. you know some you know at the end of the day music is entertainment and mm -hmm. some people just want to dance and have fun as well so yeah. those songs have their place I and mean, it'd be very boring if all songs were about like if you even look at the lyrical content outside of hip-hop it's usually mm -hmm. like love songs and stuff you know if mm -hmm. you sing or you usually a love song or about loss or about you know and that can be a bit that can be very narrow you know hip-hop yeah. you've you have a lot more to write about, as yeah. I mentioned previously before. Like there's so many, so much lyrics in hip hop, and mm. um, that's a great thing. But um, it's good to, um, I don't know, take take it wherever you want to go. You kind of free reign to do what you want. You don't have to sing about anything. I mean, you can, but mm. you people like Fifty Cent and Ja Rule back in that time, just to go back to that. They they use that melodic way of switching it up and keeping that commercial and obviously they were hugely successful like get richard i try and it's one of the biggest albums that ever mm, came absolutely. out mm. uh, and that's not something that's in my locker but i remember at the time they did get me to try and sing a bit and to be honest i didn't want to do it at the time and i still look back at it like yeah 
no, that's, I mean, you had a few people saying, oh, that's good. It wasn't, <laughs> um, you know, kind of ruined um, the raps of it, in my opinion. But um, so I put out an EP after the initial, the initial mixtape or whatever you want to call it. And that came out four years after that, well, three years after that, 2008. So there's a four track EP called Design Through Rhyme. So I was, I think I sang on all four songs on that, the chorus. Um, so actually one of the tracks was on that was called In Dublin. So that was my biggest track that I'd made. And I remember it was the longest track we spent time on. I think it was two weeks on that. And we were, it was very designed with a purpose that we were going to release this on a, on a, on a, a compilation. Um, and that got released in Tara Records. And um, I was talking about this on another podcast uh, last year. And um, so that was probably the most commercial thing that I've done. And it got to number five in the Irish compilation charts at the wow. time in 2007. Mm. So that that was kind of, um, that was nice to go in and, and, and buy the CD. And um, mm. and yeah, and just Absolutely. to see my name on the back and the credits and my name and everything. And uh, there was a launch party for it. Mm-hmm. as well but uh, that's a bit of a blur i think <laughs> radio city somewhere around um short short street or something mm-hmm. i can't remember store street store street was it oh yeah yeah, uh, yeah right. store street so yeah like that's a long time ago but those are my early beginnings and mm-hmm. it's probably a lot of people have done a lot more in that time than mm-hmm. i have i have been around quite a lot yeah uh, but it's kind of the love of hip-hop itself kind mm-hmm. of other things other things in life can get in the way. So you know, your output isn't always as strong as you want it to be. So, but I've always been writing regularly, you know, it's just in terms of studio sessions and things, it's sometimes been put on the back burner, but there's always content there. I'd, I'd always be writing. Um, I mean, when you say you've been around the scene a bit, like you've already had a good few live experiences uh, on the stage, in front of an audience, um, could you take me back to kind of your earliest live experience, like uh, when, when you would have when you first started gigging, or maybe when you, you were kind of dab, uh, dabbling in, you know, testing the waters, uh, yeah. with, with like gig or not kind of thing. The Druid's Chair in Kleine, I think, was my first ever performance. If I'm correct. Wow, no. is that, does that place still exist? Is that I think, my... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I've never been there since. Um, yeah, just I think I performed in Dublin, and then one other, one other song from the the, the quintessential LP. And um, yeah, I um, wasn't used to, used to having. Uh, I, I think there were maybe forty people there, but they were right in my face. Mm. Um, that's. Um, I'm quite an introverted person and particularly back then that would have been a bit daunting to be honest. Um, so I kind of didn't look at the crowd. <laughs> I had my head on the ground and I was like, oh, oh no. fucking hell, breaking it. Like, yeah. I, I knew I would do it. I would get through it, but it was tough. And then um, I, when I went to college, so when I went to first year, then after that, one of the things that they did in the first couple of years was you had to get up and present an awful lot. I did like a, a business degree and then, um, that really helped me because I wanted to conquer that. So whilst it, most people were afraid of getting up and doing that, unless they were very outgoing people, or and even the outgoing people were afraid of it. Ironically, you would think they would think nothing of it, but it just shows you so. Um, and some people dropped out over that, actually, I think. So it just shows you the fear of public speaking and public uh, judgment. Absolutely. You know? It can be a very daunting experience yeah, for a lot of people mask and things and uh, it was just like right I've get it. but I see it as a performance you know mm-hmm. like my natural personality wouldn't be to you know, jump up and start you know entertaining people but um, I can I've learned to do it you know mm-hmm. I can jump out of my personality and <clears throat> and and deliver that in a confident manner now but to begin I remember another gig I did many years later um, I think the crowd was maybe 60 or 70 I was someone showcased. They got me to come in and do a couple of tracks, and then it was a younger crowd. There was a mix of young, like young. When I say young, probably eighteen. Mm-hmm. And I think 
God, I'm, I can't remember the year now. It was, it was a few, a good few years ago now. But um, I remember it, all these kind of younger people on the right hand side, and all these kind of a bit older people on the left. I remember the people on the left were kind of staring and looking at me, and then the people on the right were looking at me, but looking at me a little different, like, "What the fuck okay. is he?" Because a lot of the guys who were doing this kind of um, future kind of mumble rap and oh. trap beats, it was all about the beat and getting people to go nuts and whatever they were, whatever they were on, you know. And um, so I felt a bit, "Oh, this is a bit. This might be my uh, my crowd." But um, I got through it anyway, and then um, some people came up to me after, and like, that was really good, keep at it, keep doing it. So that helped, because they could see um, that I was nervous. So yeah, I, I experienced that quite a lot, cause, um, and I think most introverted performers experience that. But I think only your kind of passion for music or singing or whatever it is will get you past that. But that was a big hurdle for me, actually. Mm, I'd say so. I really just shied away and gone, no, I'm too afraid to do that. I always kind of knew I would kind of conquer that. So it's it, it's a very good, um, uh, what's the word? Learning curve. You have conquered that. I still mm. get nervous from time to time, but I've played up to like nearly, actually last year I played to nearly six, 700 people. Wow. Um, so that was huge. And Tell me about I, that. That was an amazing experience. That was uh, like a company thing. Um, it was, uh, a charity uh, there was a charity event and then there was um a kind of christmas party thing and then um, had a, a kind of um performance team and i was asked to do it so that was great so and um, things like that help um and one of them was in a sugar club so i'd always oh, wow. to play there so i got to play to a, like a packed sugar club mm. which was awesome like uh, we only did one song but ended up doing it like three or four times because we won the competition but um but you got to do it in a very savage venue too which yeah, definitely it turns way, heads, you know? in my mind like had i ever played the sugar club it would have been okay and um, my ideal scenario would be to support say i don't know like a big hip-hop artist like who comes out because i would go there quite a bit and then um, like right okay i'll get a support slot here but realistically i'd probably get a support slot and you'd have maybe it's usually 10 people at the front kind of pretending to dance and then you have the rest of the people sitting down and they're kind of kind of watching going who's this guy so you can't really get them out of the, coming out of the gate and just get them like that so it was kind of better that the room was packed and they knew what they were kind of getting to a degree. Mm. So yeah, that was, that was great. Cause I was getting kind of, I was getting what I'd achieve, what I wanted to achieve out of it in a short kind of window. string of gigs um with the international bar and um, yeah, right, yeah. how, how did that all come about um so at the showcase that uh, i was referring to earlier 
I played there that, and I remember thinking, okay, it's, this is a bit of a crammed spot, but it uh, kind of works for hip hop. You know, you don't need, like acoustically, it kind of worked okay. So it's kind of the first thing that came to mind. I was like, right, um, I've not done enough gigs to warrant people giving me a slot at their shows. Um, and I hadn't really gone to many networking things. I used to go to a lot, like the rap battles and the gigs that be on in the, in the kind of Irish hip hop scene. So I'd been a bit away from that. And I was like, right, I'm going to have to put on my own gig. Now. So that was the first, one of the first places that um, I looked into. And it was great. Um, there's no, you don't have to pay anything to play there. Nope. Um, they have equipment. You just mm-hmm. need to kind of arrive early and, set yourself up really and um, they're always very good to us and God, I think we did f- maybe five or six shows there we used to play every kind of quarter wow. less and um, bring in some other some other acts as well and I think the first one you know the first one was the first one so I think we'd only maybe 30 people mm-hmm. we got up to maybe 70 in one of them so but uh, yeah very kind of intimate gigs and kind of done the way that I wanted to do them, you know, and uh, mm-hmm. yeah, they were successful in in that sense at least. You, I, I spoke to very briefly. Um, this was a while back. Now I spoke to a Brazilian DJ going by the name DJ Noé, and uh, he told me that he DJed. Um, a, I think it was your your launch your launch party, am I correct? Uh, yeah, for the dopamine, dopamine single. Party. Yeah, so I'm I'm going to be working with him uh, soon on maybe a single or an EP. Um, he, he came from Brazil, maybe six months or maybe a bit longer than that. So yeah, he he's real old school head with hip hop and um, a, a great guy. And um, so I'm working with him. I'm working with um, an Irish producer who's uh, kind of a dance kind of vibe. Um, I think he's signed to a label. Uh, he's got quite a good following as well. So i um, looking forward to working with him after this Corona virus. Yeah. And, um, there's a few other things in the pipeline as well. Yeah. So I'm kind of keeping my options open and trying to explore new ground. Really Not good. myself to just making the same kind of things, yeah. you know. So there's a lot of stuff on the horizon then that you want to kind of do yeah, and like, achieve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's a, another charity thing that I'm doing. I just need to see whether it's going to happen now after all this. But um, yeah, there's a few things happening, and uh, there'll be more music and more live performances and I was hoping to play at a festival this year but I'm not sure if that's going to happen now the way things are but uh, right, yeah. that's uh, that's something that's on my book mm. list I of course care if it's a big one or a small one and yeah I'd like to get involved in that although maybe uh, the first album was quite dark it, it, a lot of festivals kind of probably cater to music that's more upbeat and stuff so um I, I have songs like that, so um, it might be a short slot. But yeah, uh, still, um, it'd be nice to get an experience of that. Cool. Very good. Um, your second album is pretty much finished now. Um, and obviously, you said earlier that you're not going to drop it yet. And that, I honestly think that's a, that's a much better uh, idea now in terms of the, the climate that we're in currently at the moment. Um, but what I'm really curious about is you went a different direction with the second album in terms of your, uh, its sound. Um, what, what, was the, what was so different about the second album versus the first album that wanted you to, wanted to make you kind of change direction? Um, I'm not sure. It's kind of just the kind of beats I was getting were kind of put me in a different mind state. Um, it's... It's not a million miles away from student of the game, but it's a bit more of an elevated sound. Like the 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 beats are a little different; they sound a little different. So this gives someone a different, um, I don't know, a different flavor or mix or whatever. Um, 
And what sort of genre are you? Sorry? What sort of genre are you we talking about when you say they sounded different? Was there a specific genre behind that or uh it's very kind of European, like um it's uh kind of hip hop, soul, electro, it's kinda well, the first album had touches of that as well, but it's just um, this album is largely produced by a guy in Berlin called Pascal Cousy, uh, aka New Beats, okay. and he's largely so he's largely produced this record, and that's kind of shaped it. And without him, there wouldn't be a record, to be honest. So yeah, he's been a great help. So I'm not sure how many tracks it's going to be, but uh, yeah, it's largely produced by him. I have Peter Keane on one track from him. It's quite an upbeat one as well. Uh, who else have I got on there? Um, I think of a couple of, of a few more anyway. We'll see. But um, yeah, I've performed some of these live and they've gone down well. So I've kind of a rough idea of how it would be received as well, which is good like, to get feedback on. Oh, I like that one. And, Okay, I see what we did there. And um, I put out a track there last week called The Path Less Taken. Mm -hmm. um, that's produced by New Beats. It's kind of a piano style beat. It's kind of a little different than what I'd normally do. But um, I wanted to put that out because I thought it was relevant to the time mm -hmm. of what's happening now and also was give people a flavor of something brand new that I've not performed before. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Um, so. The recording of the album itself, Bat uh, Battle of the Hemispheres, uh, obviously all done and dusted. Um, really looking forward to seeing how that pans out uh, when it drops. Um, what could you talk to maybe the audience about, like maybe your process for building an online presence? Um, sort of like, how are you kind of advertising yourself or the Dior brand? Um, Facebook and Instagram, and those are the main tools, really. Um, yeah, like it's tough going. Um, I think I need to be gigging more. Uh, I think everyone will tell you that. But yeah, in the last few years, I've been doing more gigs, getting better at the uh, the live side of things. But um, it like I said, it's managing, trying to manage your resources and um finding the time to write, finding the time to put all these things together, to record. Um, I recorded this album with James Dark in um, Black Mountain Studios, which is formerly Herbert Place. So mm -hmm. um, they've kind of moved up to the mountains there from Dublin to up to the mountains. So mm -hmm. um, it was a great experience working with him. So it took about six months to make this this album. And um, he was a great help in directing mm -hmm. that. And um, that gives it a new sound as well. Um, with all things COVID aside, um, what are sort of your plans? I know, I know, it's it's easy to say, you know, now, but let me know what's going to happen within the next kind of uh, two months down the road. But what yeah. are your plans for uh, more live gigs? What What are you thinking? Um, so I put out the track uh, "Dopamine." We did a launch for that in October. Um, then we fell into kind of the Christmas period and then the new year and then this COVID thing. So didn't get to really promote that record as much as I wanted. Uh, did a cool video uh, with Alan Dunn, uh, Rebecca Rose and the guest vocals produced by New Beats. Um, so delighted with that. That was kind of the, the flagship track of the album in terms of that modern kind of innovative kind of sound and the video as well, something kind of, interesting for people to watch um so another single from the album another video maybe yeah but i'm not sure which one yet i'm kind of torn between there's a few options there but i don't really know which one to go with yet mm -hmm. but I, I have a few options anyway which is good so it might mean another video yeah it might mean another launch party before dropping the full album but i would like to get the album here, I don't be holding on to it till 2021. You know, um, I, I, you know, I, I do, I, I want to put it out there, and it's time people have heard it because I'm a terrible procrastinator. 
and uh, oh, we all are sometimes to let, to let go of something, you know. But uh, I think a lot of musicians fall into that trap as well. Yeah, it's a tricky art form. It really is. Um, there's, there is a lot of ups and downs in it, and a lot of uh, turbulent times as well. And we're in some turbulent times at the moment too. Yeah. Um, kind of on that note, like um, that's really cool. So you're looking at maybe doing another video, doing another single drop, which was really really cool. I'm lo looking forward to hearing that as well and seeing that. Um, so where do you think kind of I don't know if you, have, you would have an opinion on this, so maybe you do. I mean, a lot of rappers would. Um, where do you see kind of Dublin hip hop going in, in the future, in a sense, like currently where it is now? Where do we would you see it going? Or, or in your opinion, what do you think about where it is now? The Dublin hip hop scene, stuff that's coming out of Dublin at the moment. I think it's great. Um, it's very healthy. It's grown a lot since I started following it in 2004. There's the quality, this and raised the videos, the promotion, the exposure, festivals, people have been booked for. Um, mm. Yeah, like it's holding its own as far as I'm concerned. And it has its own kind of sound. And I don't know, you're going to have a few people that might break out. Uh, there are a few people that already have. Mm. But, um, yeah, I think it's in a good place. I think cool. it's going to keep growing. And um, it's great that uh, a lot of people would have looked in their nose at it, someone from Ireland rapping and you can't do that. And yes, we can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Evidently, absolutely. Yeah, well, even when I started, I remember thinking, oh, no, I can't do that. Like, that's just, I'm going to get abuse if I do that. So I kind of kept it to myself. Uh, right. And then I kind of ran the eight mile kind of thing. I think yeah. Eminem broke a lot of barriers for white people. Mm -hmm. I'd say I'm like, <laughs> <"Yeah>, <laughs> like Eminem. but I guess it's true as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think a lot of people would have started with Eminem and Dr. Dre. And, you know, if you're from that time period, but yeah, some people are still surprised. Um, it's not something you would think of when you met, when you meet me as well. It, you know, um, I get a, a lot of people that would kind of overlook me as well, which is kind of my own fault or whatever. <laughs> are, are, um, they, are they expecting some kind of real in-your-face attitude? You know, no, oh, well, this person's a rapper kind of thing. Well, see, it's usually what works in the reverse. They'll hear that I'm, they'll meet me and then they'll hear later on that I do that. It's right, not the first okay. thing to say to people. Yeah. But if they learn that I'm a rapper first, we get introduced as, oh, this guy's an MC. And they're not <laughs> used to that, then mm. they will... I don't, I don't know whether they have preconceptions about working from that about it's right. it's a bit cliche to do that but yeah um yeah when people meet you they're probably expecting you to they're like what there's no way how could he possibly you know yeah because it's it's completely at odds with my personality mm. i'd be a very kind of reserved person okay. um, so the idea of me getting up on a stage and performing confidently in front of hundreds of people is a bit hard to believe. Yeah. And um, even people that have seen me do, do that straight after, it's a bit like a flash in the pan for them. It's a bit like, and now we're back. You know, it's, <laughs> it, yeah, it, they never quite believe it. But the, the people are supportive as well. It's nice to get that because I suppose they don't know much about you. And then they go, okay, that's what he's about. Good for him. Yeah. Or not, you know, uh, you never know. But uh, it's generally been positive to my face, at least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have any ideas for um, people uh, in isolation at the moment? And uh, even for yourself, what is your own sort of creative process in isolation? I mean, um, are you working on anything at the moment currently? Um, am I creating? Yeah, are, are you creating music? Or are you writing music? Or are you thinking about writing music? <laughs> uh, not really, to be honest. I kind of have enough music ready to go. Okay. Um, that's the thing as well. You can't really just go, I'm going to sit down and write a song. It has to kind of happen organically. It's got to flow, it's isn't it? Like, yeah. I have a few things that I can work on, but uh, they haven't quite come to fruition yet. But I'm not okay. forcing it either. Uh, yeah. Well, it's right, it will. 
it will go on the page and then hopefully it will transfer to the the vocal boot and yeah. then we can see if it's any use or if I'd rather need to rip it up and start again. <laughs> well, um, it's plenty of time for that. Yeah, well. yeah. you got to be professional with it. I was, I've learned the hard way over the years. You've got to just... Yeah. If, if it's worth doing, then do it correctly and put your money up where your mouth is. And some people don't want to put the money up because they think, oh, that's a waste of money. I won't get it back. And you're probably dead right on that. But that's mm. not the point. The point is to... Um, you're cra- you know, it's it's like anything. If you're a painter, you're going to buy the good materials. If you're, you know, if you're an athlete, you're going to buy the best equipment that you need, best body wear, whatever it is. You invest in yourself, and then yeah. you get the the results from that. And mm-hmm. you mightn't have any economic gain from it, or you might, but I don't think that should be the reason for it. Okay. Like, uh, You've got to invest, you know. Even yeah. producers always thought as well. Producers would spend loads of money on gear, and so would like guitarists and stuff, you know, yeah. like yeah. buying buying amps and buying mm. buying all this equipment. So for me, it's just like right. I'll just invest in like the vocals, yeah. You know, uh, get the right beats, and then try and make good songs out of it and try and make it better and then pick the best ones mm. that way that takes a lot of time to to source the right the right beats because you could hear a beat and go yeah i don't like that or i'm not doing much of that but someone mm. else could. so i know pretty quickly if i can use something or not and go, okay this is good mm. or this isn't and then um, yeah i would think it's worth putting my money where my mate is with it because at the end of the day if it's not successful or anything what really matter too much mm-hmm. because i'll have enjoyed creating it and hopefully people have enjoyed listening to it then as well so mm-hmm. it's kind of it's just art really yeah uh so i don't know how long i'll keep doing this but uh, mm-hmm. i'm gonna put out this one and then just keep kind of doing it as so as it feels right you know what i mean yeah um, Actually, I might be working with another singer as well. Oh, this cool. Year. Uh, so, yeah, there's, there's a few things. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of things happening. Um, once we're allowed uh, out of our prisons and uh, yeah. to, to breathe mask-free, and um, that would be an interesting world to step in. People are allowed to go to gigs again. to be good as well, you know, yeah. and, and that's safe. Plenty of gigs happening weekly and people yeah. putting on great, great events and uh, giving people a chance to showcase their abilities to sing or rap or dance or whatever it is. So um, it's good, but it's it's also a crowded market. So you have certain people that are doing very well. Right. But they're grinding hard to get there. So uh, yeah. I need a bit more grind and probably less content maybe and just yeah. put out something and put more more of a business mindset mm-hmm. into it. I learned a lot in the last few years. Uh, so at least when if I am playing live more regularly, I'll be a lot more equipped than I would have been, say, Five years ago, if I was given the chance to perform in front of a few hundred people, mm-hmm. probably wouldn't have been up to it. So yeah. I got to build to that. And now, if given the chance, I, it, it won't matter how many people are there. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a good challenge as well. Um, you get to put yourself on that level. Um, so hopefully there's more of that to come bigger and bigger crowds. Yeah. That would be the main thing. Because that mm. seems to be as well, a different buzz as well. Like the live thing is just so different because you make a, a song in the studio and be happy with it and listen back and get people to listen to it. But I mean, the real vibe is the live. Right. It's the live vibe. Yeah. You get to see people engaging with what you've created. So yeah, that's what it's about. So gigs, gigs, and more gigs. Great, great. I suppose it's it's um, it's obviously what you enjoy the most is is the live experience as well. You know, you really do yeah. get a rush out of that, don't you? I mean, as a as a musician or as a as well, an artist, it's petrify me, but <laughs> <laughs> it's weird how it goes. Mm. Um, if you prepare enough, and sometimes you will like forget a line and you'll just freestyle something or you'll whatever. Mm. Um, just being comfortable up there yeah um, 
it's a tough thing to do. Like a lot of people just, if you say you're a performer, they will think that you're just a nat- you're not should be able to get up and do that. That's a given. Mm. Won't cut you any slack. But if they know who you are or if they were asked to get up, they're like, oh, I can never do that. You know, it hits home that, okay. Yeah. And then when they do it, uh, like, wow, God, all these people are staring at me mm. or whatever. But yeah, you get used to that after a while. But um, it's pretty tough at the start because, like, you are being judged. If you're not someone who likes being judged, then uh, you're not going to go near that stage. Or yeah, that yeah. Work where you need to present. It's you. You put yourself on the line. Yeah. You're going to fuck up from time to time as well, and uh, there's no hiding from that. Of course, it's a light on you when you. It's sink or swim, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're really in the just like literally. Yeah. <laughs> flaws and all like you just mm. just get up and do it and for me like I watch back performances of done and go okay I like that I don't like what I did there you know I've studied that as well because uh, the live thing was new enough to me but no I've done enough gigs now um, that I'm confident in getting up in front of kind of any crowd really mm. it doesn't matter what it is so that would have been something I would have said a few years ago so it's yeah. taken be a bit longer than I should have, but I think I've reached uh, a good level now with this with this live thing, and cool. hopefully I can find the time to to piece together some more events. Yeah, and, um, yeah, and just push it a bit further, and just do some more videos, and like I said, just uh, spread the the music further. Cool. Well, listen, thanks very much for taking the time out and talking to us on uh, DP's Creative Circus. I uh, no really problem. appreciate that. Um, it was just a really interesting insight into um, a hip hop artist kind of um, uh, creative, uh, how, how should I say it, uh, body of work as well, and like the way the way you do stuff as well. It's really interesting. Um, really looking forward to the album uh, Battle of the Hemispheres, which is due to come out very soon. Uh, and then looking forward to seeing more of Deep Reason in the future. Um, obviously, when all this COVID craziness is over. Uh, yeah. My, what do you think? Well, am I going to see on Graphic Street anytime soon? Maybe do a bit busking too? Or? Who knows? Yeah. I had luck to do that. Um, we'll see if it could be Christmas time. It could be cold out there. No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. That's something I wanted to do as well. So, um, yeah. I think I'll need to be doing more things like that to, to, um, to build more exposure. And to all the um, listeners, uh, where can people find you? Uh, what's your kind of your prominent platform online where they can find your stuff? Uh, I think Spotify is the main thing for people. It's the music is on um, Tidal. It's on Apple Music. It's on Amazon, Deezer. You name it. It's it's on there cool. and Bandcamp as well. Um, so you the student the game project, and then you have the single dopamine. So the album. Well, I don't know if I'm going to put it on Spotify initially, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm still deciding a few things as well. Mm. So, uh, oh, it will be out, but uh, that's where you can get um, the tracks and SoundCloud as well. Actually, might have a few little extra ones in there. Very good, excellent. Cool. Well, um, deep reason. Thank you very much for talking to me. Um, I've on. been Dara Palmer, and this has been DP's Creative Circus. Uh, tune in again uh, for loads more interesting content um, there again you can find Deep Reason on all the major platforms that we just discussed um, Deep Reason thanks very much peace out man. thank you chat again
rust Needs to be fed, keep containing us Trying to fill a void that can't be filled in And it still might sink in Chasing that rush and seal that will It's become an addiction Endorsing the dolphins, feel the spice Separating fact from fiction Hook to the potion An explosion of motion You can't ignore it Cause from inception we try to move forward Deep inside with conviction To a visit, true depiction Like a dream but obscene